It's a pretty common question about how to revise for the practical elements of the new GCSEs and A-levels. And Fermi asked me this recently, what do I really need to know? What do I need to know for GCSE and A-level about the required practicals, core practicals, PAGs, whatever your syllabus calls it? Well, in this video, I'm going to go through exactly what you need to know. Well, not everything you need to know, but the types of things you need to know and how to really revise that. So I hope this is a really useful video for you. For me, you cannot go wrong with finding all of the practicals for your course and actually going through them step by step. Equipment, procedures, improvement and maths. If you learn all that about all of those practicals, you're going to have the knowledge and understanding that's going to enable you to tackle all of those more tricky questions in the exam. DfE set subject content. They write a document and they say this is what must be in GCSE physics, this is what must be in A-level physics and all the other sciences, all the other subjects as well. And actually they're pretty lazy and they're pretty similar. The only big difference between the way that practicals are assessed in GCSE and A-level is that A-level has this separate practical endorsement which universities really wanted to show that kids actually were actually doing a lot of practicals because they knew that skill is very important for university courses. So really, the stuff is pretty similar between GCC and A-Level for as per what you need to be revising for your practicals. If I was at the DfE, I wouldn't have called it practicals, I'd be calling it experiments, because that's what science is, doing experiments. And in physics, a lot of experiments never even happened. They were like thought experiments. So it's a very important distinction to make practical versus experiment, in my opinion. But I digress. You want to know what you need to be studying and how to study for those practical elements of the course. Okay, well, the DfE says there needs to be at least 15% of every qualification of every exam needs to be about practicals. And they give a list of um, apparatus and techniques that need to be assessed. The exam boards have designed the required practicals to meet that. They designed the practicals to cover the apparatus and techniques. There's also then working scientifically. Working scientifically means how experiments work. So I've got a video that explains independent variable, dependent variable, control variables. That's basically it. It's basically the general procedures of how experiments work. So go ahead and check out that video if you, you're not sure what I mean when I say working scientifically. Also, of course, safety aspects come into that, design experiments, etc. come into that. So the required practicals are just a way of getting you to cover all the things that the Department for Education tell you needs to be covered. And well, what I suggest you do is actually make sure you've done all the practicals. Go to your teacher. If you think you haven't done all of those 8 at GCSE and 16 or 12 at A-level and you haven't done some of them, say, I want to do these practicals, please. You owe us doing these practicals. I need to have done these practicals before I sit my exams, it's only fair. So if you've done that, then write those practicals up in detail, because by doing that, covering all of that, all of that material, you're going to have covered everything that's gonna be coming up in the exams about those practicals. If it comes to revision and you want to know how to kind of structure your revision for this, I would think about all of those practicals, about the equipment, procedures, improvements, and then the maths. That would be my kind of four headings to kind of make notes or make flashcards to actually go ahead and remember everything about that. And in physics, remember, maths is 40% of the exam. So what I mean by the equipment, make sure that you know exactly what it is that you're going to use, why it is, why it's more accurate than another piece of equipment. Procedures, that's methods. You're going to need to learn those methods pretty much by heart. In detail, trying to think each step, justifying why do we do it like this? Why do we count? Why do we time 10 things and then divide by 10 to give us a more accurate timing, for example? And then the improvements. How can you actually improve these practicals? That's going to be the evaluative detail. Why is it that this is not such a good method compared to this other method? Why is that one not as good as this one? How can we take a method and improve that? And then lastly, the maths. What graph do we plot? What equations do we apply? How do we get a straight line graph? What does the gradient mean? That type of thing. And of course, the statistics side, which is all about uh, averages and why we do that, and etc. Now, if you want to know what types of questions they're going to ask, then I've got some examples of both 
GCSE and A level examples that I'll put two kind of consecutive cards up here. Um, but essentially, they could ask you anything. They could ask you the full range of skill level. They could ask you state, just remembering things, so memorize the practicals, all the way through to create. They could ask you just to come up with a completely new practical. But that practical would be using those apparatus and techniques that were set out by the DFE at the very beginning. So you can't go wrong by really revising the practicals that are set out by the exam board hard. So they could ask you, some questions could be state a method, which would be like, remember the method for this. They could ask you to analyze some data. They could say, here's some kids data. Can you plot a graph of it? Can you get the average? Can you, um, can you work out the density of something? They could ask you to take somebody's data or the graph and give the conclusions for that. They could ask you to evaluate somebody's practical, either their method or their data or their techniques or their equipment, anything. And they could ask you to come up with a completely new method, as I've, as I've said, but not on something that's not on your syllabus. Some exam boards and some publishers do have really good lab books, especially for the A-level. There's quite a few practical books and I'll link a few of them down here below because having your course exam book is really useful. But all of the exam boards for GCSE and A-level, they do publish sheets on each of their practicals. Dig them up or get your teachers to dig them up and have a good look at those. They've usually got a method and if there's not a method, it's because they're using it as a, um, as a practical to teach you to design your own method. So they've usually got some suggestions about the method in there. But they were almost all of them always have something at the end that tells you what types of thing are going to be in the exam from that practical. Or they've got a list of questions, and those questions are making sure that you're looking at the right parts of the practical, you're learning the right skills from the practical, you're learning the right knowledge from the practical for the exams. I hope that was helpful. I'm Kit Best Master, and this is Gorilla Physics, and we're all about you understanding your physics more, so you're going to enjoy it more, so you're going to get more confident and then do better in your exams. Thanks a lot for watching.